Hi, yogis. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me for our class today. Uh, we'll be focusing on a little hippie hips kind of practice. We'll also focus on um, the theme being surrender and letting everything just be. If you have props, grab them, get them handy. Blankets, bolsters, blocks, straps, or eye pillows. If you don't, that is quite all right. We will be, we won't have to have them, but I will be cueing them. If you are going to be playing music, you can play whatever you'd like, or if you would like to follow along, you can go to my Spotify playlist and the class that the playlist that we'll be playing today is called flow and then the letter N in parentheses. So if you are going to play that start now, let's scooch it to the side. Come into a comfortable seated position. Sitting tall, you can sit up on blankets, bolsters, or blocks, whatever allows those hips to be a little bit above your knees. And maybe you wiggle side by side, forward and back to help find the six bones. So really ground those six bones into the earth. If you would like, since we will be in this pose for a little while, you can take your hands, place one hand on the bottom of your thigh, one hand on the top of the thigh, and encourage the external rotation. And do that on the other side. So we're encouraging an external rotation of the femur bone, the bone in our thighs, to help take the top of the femur into the socket. Again, elongating through the spine, top of the head reaching toward the ceiling, your mudra, your hand gesture of choice, eyes closed, deep breath in, cleansing inside. Allowing our breath to invite us into the present moment. Drawing ourselves here. Now. Allowing everything else to fade away. Our to-do list our worries, our fears, our dreams. Just let them fade into the background noise. Imagine that we're wrapped in this bubble. And everything else is on the outer side of the bubble. Knowing that we can return to it when we're done with our practice, and just maybe some of those items might naturally fade away without us holding so tightly onto them. To assist us in anchoring in this moment, find your anchor. Is it your breath? Is it a sensation in the body? Is it my voice? The most common anchor is our breath. But if that does not serve you, then by all means, find your own anchor. With our awareness on our breath, it might begin to slow down. And since this is our yang, our active class, maybe you wish to turn your breath into an ujjayi breath. That slight constriction in the throat as if we're fogging up a mirror with our mouth closed, that dark fader sound.
And with our breath, anchoring us into this moment, set an intention for your practice today. Let's ask the universe for this intention with three rounds of home. Inhale. Uh... Allowing the echoes of our owners to turn the space around us into a sacred space. When you are ready, rotate your palms facing down on knees or palms and slowly open them. Bringing your left foot forward if it's not already there. Again, decide if you wish to stay up on your blankets or maybe remove a blanket or not. Bringing the hands out front, cupping the hands like you're holding on to two cupcakes. Rooting through the sits bones, really ground those sits bones into the earth. As we inhale, lengthen, reach to the top of our head, hinging forward from the hips, maybe walking your hands forward. Inhale, lengthen, reach the top of the head, exhale, ground through the sit bones, and maybe we can reach a little bit more walking. Inhale, lengthen, coming out of the pose ever so slightly. On the exhale, tiptoe our hands over toward the right. So we're at a diagonal from this right knee. Inhale, lengthen through the top of the head. Exhale, ground through the sit bones. Inhale, reach. Exhale, hinge. Hold. So how did you do in this first moment? Were you able to be kind to yourself, your body? Were you able to surrender any judgment over how you think this pose should look? Is it driving you crazy that your nose is not touching your toe, your knee? Let's embrace our body, our being, this moment with grace. Inhale, lengthen, come out of the pose ever so slightly. On the exhale, walking our hands, tiptoeing our hands over toward the right a little bit more. You can plant your right hand, you can cup your right hand, take your left hand, place that palm down onto the right, your left thigh, drawing that thigh to the earth. Reaching through the left arm, palm facing down, flipping the palm facing up. Inhale, reach that arm up, exhaling up and over. Maybe you wish to hinge to the side a little bit more by bending your right elbow. Maybe you want to walk your right arm a little bit more out to the side. Maybe you want to place it onto a block. You can find whatever version of this pose serves you best. If the hip pops up, just ground through that hip. Maybe come out of the pose slightly. Bring our hand to our heart center for a moment. Open our chest up toward the ceiling. If it serves your neck to look up, then look up or look down or neutral. Reaching through our left arm again, palm facing down. Inhale, reach, exhale, ground through your left sit bone. Inhale, reach to the top arm. The exhale brings us up, palms touch. The next exhale brings our hands down to our heart center. 
switching out your feet. So instead of the left foot forward, the right foot is forward. Cupping those hands out front, rounding through the sit bones. Inhale, lengthen, reach to the top of the head. Exhale, ground the sit bones down. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, hinging from the hips, keeping the sit bones, those hips, the pelvis all rooted and grounded. Maybe we wish to walk our arms forward a little bit more. Maybe we want to elongate through the neck a little bit more. As long as that does not bring up the sit bones, finding your version of this pose. Understanding that one side may feel quite different than the other. Finding our ujjayi breath. You can also direct your breath to different parts of your body. So if you're feeling a strong sensation in your lower back or your hips, send your breath there. Send that healing divine light there. Inhale, lengthen as we come out of the pose slightly. Exhale, tiptoe in our hands over toward that left knee. Getting a diagonal from the left knee. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, ground through the sit bones. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, hinge. Again, knowing that one side may be very, very different than the other. Inhale as we lengthen, coming out of the pose ever so slightly. Exhale, walking, tiptoeing those hands over toward the left. Cupping or planting your left hand, bringing your right hand onto your, your right thigh, palm facing down, really crown through that right hip, that right sit bone. Extending your right arm long, palm facing down, flipping the palm up, inhaling arm up, exhaling up and over. Again, maybe you wish to bend your left elbow. Maybe you want to walk your left hand over to the side, bringing the forearm arm onto your mat or onto a block. Whatever serves your neck best. So looking down to the side or up. Taking a moment, bringing that palm to the heart, rotating your chest up a little bit more toward the ceiling, and then reaching the arm long again. If that serves your shoulder, if it does not, you can always bring your fingertips to the shoulder. You can always bring your hand down. That's the beautiful part about yoga. So not about way, the, the way these asanas look. It's not comparing our body, our poses to what we see on Instagram or social media. It's about getting to know the way our body feels, what our body needs moment to moment. Reaching to the top arm on the inhale, the exhale brings us up, palm stretch. Next exhale brings those hands down to our heart center. So you can either kick your feet to the side or you can roll forward as we come up into a tabletop position. Wrists in line with shoulders, knees in line with hips, spreading the fingers nice and wide. Inhale as we lower the belly, reaching through the top of the head. Exhale as we round our belly button, chin to chest. Flowing with your own breath at your own pace. Breathing. After the next exhale, reach into your tabletop position, curling our toes under, lifting the knees off the mat ever so slightly and hover here. Hovering with the knees off the mat that allows us to activate these quadriceps, the muscles of the front of our thighs. Keeping our heels up as we lift our tailbones up high to the sky. On the exhale, release your heels down toward the earth, flanking the tailbone toward a back wall. Breathe. Soft knees, strong legs, lengthening the tailbone, creating some spaciousness between our hips and the ribs. Broad collarbone, spread the fingers. Maybe this is your first hour dog of the day, so you want to walk your dog, bending one knee, and then switch. Ardhuka Sanasana, downward facing dog. Maybe you want to bend your knees and shift your hips side by side. 
Again, discovering what serves you best. Can you honor your body? Can you listen to your body? Can you love your body? Looking at the top of the mat, bend the knees, hop or step toward the top of our mat. Allowing your feet to be hip distance apart. Again, when I say hip distance, I mean a hip bone distance apart. So that's about two fist distance apart. Lengthen the top of the head toward the front wall. On the exhale, soft knees. Stomach makes a connection to our thighs as we release. Taking your arm variation of choice, since we will be here for a few moments, you can cup or clean your hands beside your feet. You can bring your hands more out front. You can even grab a hold of opposite elbows. So see what serves you best. You can glue those forearms to your calves. Maybe you want to place your hands under your feet, palms facing up, or grab a hold of your heels. Again, a lot of different options, knowing that one option is never better than the other. It is all about what you need in your body in this moment. Surrendering this idea that our asanas should be like anybody else's, our poses are our own. Shift the weight forward more into your toes, engaging those quadriceps to help get longer stretch in your hamstrings. Top of the head is reaching to the earth, looking toward our knees. Inhale, lengthen the top of the head toward that front wall. Exhale, fold. Strong legs, bring those arms up, palms touch. Exhaling, hands come down to our heart center. Soft knees, strong legs, inhale, arms up, palms touch. Exhale, hinging fold. Inhale and half lift. Exhale, plant the hands to the mat, hop or step back, plank, a high push up. Drive through the heels and shift the weight forward more into your toes so the heels are in line with the balls of your feet. Engage those quadriceps. See if you can create some space between your hips and the ribs. Broaden your collarbone, armpits away from the mat. Top of the head, reaching toward the front wall. On the exhale, lower knees, chest and chin as you bend the elbows to the back wall. Pulling the floor toward you as we release all the way onto the mat. Spread those fingers nice and wide. Place your hands down and look. And see where your hand should be, where your hand should remain every time you do upward facing dog or cobra. If our hands are so close into one another, or under our chest that the elbows want to poke out, simply walk your hands out. That will help to create space, just to give a little space so the elbows can be drawn in without strain. Broad collarbone, strong legs, top of the feet glued to the mat, pushing our pelvis into the earth as we open up our chest. Cobra, curling our toes under, coming up to tabletop, curling the toes under, flipping our feet, Downward facing down. Looking at the top of the mat, bend the knees, hop or step forward. Inhale, half lift, arm it's an asana. Exhale as we fold. Maybe your feet want to go a little closer together. Listening to your body, listening to your hamstrings and your back. Soft knees, strong legs as we inhale the arms up, palms touch. Exhaling, hands come down to our heart center. Inhale, arms up, palms touch. Exhale, hinge forward, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bend the knees, place the hands on the mat, hop or step back, plank, high push up. Shift the heels forward, bend the elbows toward the back wall, going into chaturanga or your knees, chest, chin. Pulling the floor toward you as we flip our feet, bring the tops of the feet onto the mat, broad collarbone, soft elbows, upward facing dog. Curl our toes under, exhale. Downward facing dog, three. Rediscovering our ujjayi breath in case we lost it. Looking at the top of the mat, bend the knees, hop or step forward, inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Soft knees, strong legs, inhale, arms up, palms touch. Exhaling, hands down to heart center. Inhale, arms up, palms touch. Maybe a back bend, opening the chest to the ceiling. Exhale, hinging from the hips, Uttanasana, forward fold. 
Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bend the knees, place the hands onto the mat, hop or step back, plank, high push up. Lower knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhaling, upward facing dog or cobra. Curling our toes under, exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe it in, breathe it out. Inhale, right leg up in the air. Exhale, bend the knee, stack the hips, drawing your right toes toward your left elbow. If your right shoulder is popping up, round your right shoulder down to help level through the hips. Maybe you want to make circles with your ankles or with your knee to help open up the hip. Whatever serves you best. If you made circles going one way, go the opposite way. Level through the hips, pointing your right toes down. Pick your left heel up. Bend your right knee. Bring your right knee toward your stomach. Glide forward. Right knee comes to chest. Step your right foot toward your right hand. If you step halfway, that is okay. Assist your leg. Use your hand. Assist it. Bring it up. When I first started practicing yoga, I was only able to step halfway. Lower your left knee down. If you feel a lot of pressure in that left knee, Take a blanket, fold it up, place it under the knee. Bring your right hand onto the inside of your right foot. Pause. This is where we're gonna really check in on our right hip. Take the femur bone, the bone in your right thigh. Take the head of the femur bone, the top of the femur, bring it into the socket. So that your hip is a ball and socket joint. So the femur, I want you to take it and bring it into the hip. This will help create stability. Creating that stability is what is going to encourage you to be able to get into these muscles, get into this fascia, these ligaments, which will help create flexibility. Stability does assist in flexibility safely. So if when you do that, your toe, your knee starts to point out to the side, that is quite all right. I know in some classes we might hear, hey, your knee needs to be forward, your knee needs to be forward. That's not entirely, entirely accurate. It's about understanding our body, how different our body is. So if the knee does go to the side, simply turn the toes to the side ever so slightly because where the toes go, the knee goes. That helps protect the knee. Bring your right hand to the inside of that right foot. Stay here, or you can lower your elbows down onto blocks. You can also lower your elbows all the way down into the mat. Again, whatever serves you best here. And breathe. Breathe into these different parts of our body. Breathing into the hips. Uncovering what's been hiding there. If you feel an emotion come up, let it come up. Observing it with non-judgment. And just maybe it'll come up. It'll come up. And slowly rise back up. If you did use the block, move the block to the side. Bringing our right hand to the outside of the right foot. Curling the left toes under. If they're not already there, bringing the left knee up. Plant the hands to the mat. Step your right foot back. Plank, high push up. Ride this exhale, or the next exhale takes you into knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhaling, upward facing dog or cobra. Curl our toes under. Exhale, down, facing dog. Breathe. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, bend the knee, stack the hips. Again, leveling through the shoulders. Making circles with your ankle, lower your knee. And then the other. After you even that out, straighten out your left leg, pointing the toes down. Pick your right heel up, bend your left knee, bring the knee toward the stomach, then the chest, glide forward. Runners lunge on this side. Lowering the right knee down. Again, using blanket for support if that serves your knee best. Bringing left hand to the inside of the left foot, staying here, we're lowering the elbows down. Again, checking in on that left hip, draw that femur bone into the socket. If that makes the knee pop out to the side, then move your toes to the side. Only you will know that balance there. I cannot, I will not know the inner workings of your body, no matter how well I get to know your body. Only you can tell me when that femur bone 
is in this socket. Only you can tell me what feels best in your knee. Remember, discomfort is natural, a sharp pain is not. The important part we have to remember is that hips are all different. And hips are actually one of the most um, personalized bones in the body, or joints in the body, meaning that everybody's uh, hips can be different and it all is determined on the bony disposition of the, the bones of the hips. It has nothing to do with how strong you are, how flexible you are. So we have to adapt and cater these asanas to everybody's individual body. Coming back up, moving support, the blocks out of the way. Left hand comes to the outside of the left foot, curling your right toes under, bringing right knee up. Plank the hands on that, step your right foot back, plank, high push up, ride this exhale, or the next exhale takes you into knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, pulling the floor toward you as you inhale, upward facing dog or cobra, curl the toes under, exhale, downward facing dog, breathe. Inhale, right leg up in the air, exhale, lift your left heel up, bend the knee, step your right foot forward, runner's lunge, drive to the left heel, then bring that heel forward and up. Check in on what we just did. So we're just going to keep adding on. Right hip back, left hip forward, femur bone into the sockets, strong leg. So we have our feet pushing into the earth and then we're bringing it all together. You're isometrically drawing your hips together, creating that sense of stability here. As we inhale, the arms up overhead. Your arm variation of choice, you can have your arms extended long. You can cactus your arms. You can even clasp your hands behind your back. See what serves you best. Pause. Push the feet into the earth, then isometrically draw the femur bones up into the sockets. See how that creates some more stability? Lengthen through the tailbone, create some space between hips and ribs, broad collarbone, and breathe. Again, seeing what this feels like in your body, instead of worrying about what this looks like in my body. My hips may be different than yours. Surrendering that judgment. Embracing grace, acceptance. Inhale, lengthen, possibly open your heart. Exhale. Bring the hands down, plant the hands to the mat, step your right foot back, plank, high push up. Ride this exhale, or the next exhale takes you into knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Curl your toes under, exhale, down dog. Breathe in, breathe in. Inhale, left leg up in the air, bend the knee, step it through, runner's lunge, pause. Drive through the feet, driving through the right heel, bringing the heel up. Strong legs, arms up overhead. Again, pressing the feet into the earth, isometrically drawing the femur bones into their sockets, lengthen through the tailbone, creating space between hips and ribs, broad collarbone and knees. Arm variation of choice. Inhale, maybe open your heart a little more. Exhale, bring the hands down, plant the hands to the mat, step left foot back, plank. High push up. By this exhale, or the next exhale takes you into knees, chest, chin, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Curling our toes under. Exhale, down dog. Breathing in. Breathing out. Do that two more times. After the third breath, look at the top of your mat. Bend the knees, hop or step forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale as we fold. Soft knees, strong legs as we inhale, arms up, palms touch. Exhale, hands to heart center. Very, very nice, everybody. All right, shift the weight over into your left foot. Really ground that foot into the earth. And again, we're all about hips today. So to focus on the hips, we need to focus on the femur. Remember, the hip is a ball and socket joint. So the top of the femur, the head of the femur is what goes, this part of that hip joint. So bring that into the socket. You feel that stability there. 
Bend your right knee and bring your, place your hands onto the hips. Bring your right foot up as if you were stepping on a block. Then I want you to take this right, start at the hip and open it up. So you're creating this external rotation, just like we did when we were seated, when we were sitting at the very beginning of class. So open it up through this external rotation. The right knee goes to that side wall. Then bring the sole of the foot onto your shin or up onto the thigh. Avoid placing it on the knee. Your arm variation of choice. Find one point in front of you that's not moving that will help with balance. So you can bring your hands to your heart up above or spread those branches. Tree pose, Kanasana. So really ground through the standing leg, stabilizing those hips. Ooh. Surrendering any judgment. If we're swaying. Release that right foot down. Avoid shaking it out. Shifting the weight over to your right foot, grounding through the foot, bring the femur bone into the socket. Lifting your left leg, flexing through the foot as if you were stepping on a block, creating the external rotation here. So opening up through the hips. Placing the sole of the foot onto either your shin or up onto your back, again, avoiding the knee. Arm variation of choice. It's natural to be a little more wobbly on one side than the other. When you are ready. Release and out of the pose. Hands to our heart center. Inhale, arms up, palms touch. Exhale, hinge at the hips, forward fold. It's not so nice. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step your right foot back, runner's lunge. Release your right heel down. Bring your right, your left hip back. Remember, the name of the game today is hippie yoga. Focusing on those hips. So take the femur bone into the socket. Cartwheel your hands up, your arms up, your torso up into warrior two. Now, if you come up, remember, you can always adjust the pose. You do not have to commit to where your feet are when you first go into it. By all means, widen your stance, shorten your stance, see what feels best in your body. Again, only you know what is best for your body. Push your feet into the earth, take those femur bones drawing up into the socket. You see how that creates that stability here? Lengthen through the tailbone. Rib cage is away from our hips. You broaden the collarbone. Extend your arms long. Flip the palms facing up. Catch raindrops with your elbows as you rotate the palms down. Very nice. Look over your left fingertips. Now here, you may hear a lot in classes that, oh, this knee shouldn't be here. This knee shouldn't be here. What I want you to focus more on than where this knee should go and where these toes should go is what we're doing with the hip. Draw that femur bone into the socket. Wherever that knee goes, it's wherever that knee goes. Wherever the knee goes, I want your toes to go, okay? This stability here is what will protect our lower back, protect our pelvis, protect the knee. Or your two. Hinge forward. Bringing your left hand either cupped or planted in front of your left foot on a block or not. It can come onto your left thigh, palm facing up. Take your right hand, bring the hand toward your heart again, just like we did at the beginning of class. Remember, we're all adding on. Open the heart up to the ceiling, stay here, or maybe you wish to reach your right arm overhead, palm facing down. Beautiful. Strong legs, long spine. Reaching to the top arm, the exhale pulls us up, straighten out your left leg. Pop your hips to the side. So take the femur bone, really draw it up and in. Extend through those arms, left arm forward. Left hand comes down to block at any height, or it can be onto your shin. It can also be in front of your foot. Bring your right hand to the chest. Open the heart a little bit more to the ceiling. 
and then maybe you wish to reach through your right arm. Palm facing away from you. Trikonasana, our triangle pose. Inhale, reach the top arm. Exhale, bring us up. From here, rotate your palms away from you. Take your right hand, grab hold of your left wrist. Maybe your left hand wants to go into a mudra, a hand gesture of choice. And open up toward the back wall. Very nice. So we're just a little counter pose there. Reach through those arms, soften your front knee, cartwheel the hands back down. Pick your back heel up if you use support, switch the support out of the way. Plant the hands to the mat, step your left foot back, plank, high push up. Right, this exhale, the next exhale takes you into knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhaling upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, curl the toes under, downward facing dog. Breathe it in. And out. Look at the top of the mat, bend the knees, hop or step forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms up, palm stretch. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, arms up, palm stretch. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, left foot comes back. Runner's lunge. Release your left heel down so the toes are pointing more toward the long end of the mat. Probably your hands up. Very nice. Be a Badasana two, warrior two. All right, so from here, legs glue into the earth. Take the femur bones and the thighs from in and up. Very nice. That helps creating that extra rotation of your right thigh. Again, check in on that knee. Do you need to shorten your stance? Do you need to widen your stance? What serves you best? What feels best in the knee? Remember, creating stability here will allow us to protect that knee. Rib cage away from the hips. Rotate the palms up. Catch those raindrops with your elbows. Flip the palms down. Looking over your right fingers. Strong, powerful, wonderful warriors. Bringing your right hand forward, bringing your right hand either onto the thigh, it can be planted or cut or on a block in front of your right foot, reaching through your left arm, palm facing down. Put the hand to the chest, open the heart to the ceiling, and then reach your arm long. Again, at any point, just like we did at the beginning of class, if your shoulder begins to speak to you and it's saying, mm -mm, bring your fingertips to the shoulder. Cartwheeling our hands up, straighten our right leg, cocking the hips to the back, femur bones going into the sockets, reaching through your right arm again, bringing your hand down to the shin, cups are planted in front of your right foot. But hands come to the chest, open your heart a little bit more to the ceiling. Maybe you want to keep your hand there. Maybe you wish to bring it up more for the ceiling, palm facing away from you. Our trikonasana, our triangle pose. Soft right knee, coming back up. Taking our left hand, grab and hold of the right wrist. Maybe your right hand does a mudra. Reach, reach, reach to the back wall. It was one different wall. Releasing our arms, bending that front knee, tartle the hands down, plant the hands onto the mat, stepping back, plank, high push up, ride this exhale on the next exhale, takes you into knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhaling, upward facing dog or cobra, curl our toes under, exhale, down top. Breathing in, let it go. Lower your knees to the mat, big toe mounts together, exhale, child's pose. In this child's pose, surrender it all. Any judgment that popped up, 
even accepting our judgment with grace. Offering compassion, love, kindness to ourselves. When we offer these items to ourselves, it is much easier to give them to other people. Coming back up into tabletop, pull the toes under, downward facing. Inhale, right leg up in the air. Again, bend the knee, bring your right knee this time toward your right wrist, your right foot over toward your left wrist. Curling your left toes under, walking that left leg back. So if your right hip is up in the air, by all means, you can stay there or you can use some support place under your right glute. Cupping our hands as we open the chest into pigeon. Just be a proud pigeon for a moment. And then stay there, or you can hinge forward, leveling through those hips. You can wiggle side by side, leveling them. You can stay here with your arms. You can even walk your arms forward and rest your head down. If you want to take a find, you can thread the needle by bringing your right arm under your left. Your right face cheek to the mat. Left arm comes up back of the hand to stay or reach around for the side. If you ever do see me come out of the pose, it doesn't mean I want you to come out of the pose. It simply means I'm adjusting, I'm reading, I'm looking at my watch to make sure that I am timing you. So you don't say on one side for five minutes and another for three. Between peace. Enjoy. We can never have guests. We were already blessed where we are. This reminds me of a woman who found a scolded sponge, all dry and compressed, and tucked inside the hardened bowl was a message she had been seeking. She carried the hardened sponge to the sea. Up to her waist in the deep, she watched it unfold and come to life in the water. Magically, the secret of life became visible in the bubbles being released from the sponge. To her amazement, a small fish trapped in the sea, and the hardened sponge came alive and swam out to sea. From that day on, no matter where she went, she felt the little fish. One more minute. She felt the little fish swimming in the deep. And this, this swimming of this little fish that had for so long been asleep, gave her satisfaction that was somewhere between peace and joy. Five. One. If you are bound, unwind. If you are folded, come back up, switching your support out of the way, curling left toes under, lifting right leg up and back. As you may feel that rush, rush of sensation, stepping right foot down. Inhale, left leg up, bend the knee, bring your left knee toward your left wrist. Left foot toward your right wrist, curling your right toes under, lifting the knee up, walking it back. Top of the foot comes to the mat. Leveling through the hips, serving, using support. If that serves you, the proud pigeon, open your heart to the ceiling, hinging forward, leveling through those hips, maybe rocking side by side. Holding, if that's what serves you best. Or the bind, your torso variation of choice. Whatever our path, whatever the color or grain of our days, whatever riddles we must solve to stay alive, the secret of life somehow always has to do with the awakening and freeing 
of what has been asleep. Like the death sponge, our very hearts beg to unfold in the waters of our experience. And like that little fish, the soul is a tiny thing that brings us peace and joy when we let it swim. But everything remains hard and compressed and illegible until like this woman, waist deep in the ocean, we take our sleeping heart in our hands and plunge it tenderly into the light. We are ready. A little over one more. Two, one. If you are bound and unwind, if you're golden, come back up. Go right toes under, extend left leg back, 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 back. Release left foot. Breathing in. And out. Lower our knees to the mat, either kicking our feet to the side or crossing out the shins as we sit back. Extending the legs out front, moving toward the middle of the mat, bringing our hands behind the knees. Your feet can be together or hip width apart. Open the chest toward the ceiling and then straighten out the arms, hinging back. Elongate through the spine, maybe bringing your feet up. Maybe you wish to straighten out your legs. Maybe you want to release your hands. Good to go to the best. Shaking is natural. Four, three, two, one. Bringing our knees with us as we release onto the mat. And maybe rocking side by side. If that serves your back. Bringing the soles of the feet onto the mat, palms facing down onto the earth. Picking our hips up, our heels up, lower down one vertebra at a time as if we're placing down a strand of foot. Inhaling, hips up, heels up, exhale, lower down. One more time. Inhaling, hips up, heels up, lower down. Lifting our right leg up in the air, bringing the outside of your right ankle onto your left thigh, your right knee drawing away from you. On the exhale, bring this right foot over to the left thigh. Bringing our arms into goal posts, pushing the elbows into the earth to rotate the chest toward the ceiling. You can cactus your arms, you can bring your arms out to the side, whatever serves you best. Really draw the right knee away from you. So that allows us to get into the hips, the lower back, as well as adding the twist to our spine. Inhaling, exhale, bring the knees back up to center, I'm crossing the legs, sole of both feet onto the mat. Pick the hips up, level them out, bring them back to the mat. Lift the left leg up in the air, bring the outside of the left ankle onto your right thigh. On the exhale, bringing your right foot over to the left, cactus the arms, go close them, rotating the chest to the ceiling, and your arm variation of choice. Again, really planting and rooting that left foot into the earth, drawing that left knee away from us.
Coming back to center, uncrossing the legs, picking the hips up, level them onto the mat, placing back down. Drawing knees to chest, knees toward their armpits, flexing through the feet, parallel the feet toward the ceiling, placing the hands onto the outside of your shins, outside or inside of feet, into our happy baby pose. Release now the pose, nose to knees, squeeze into a ball, giving yourself that well deserved hug. Squeeze everything nice and tight, take a deep breath in. Oh. Release legs, arms beside you. You can take a bolster or blanket, place it under your knees, maybe an eye pillow on your eyes. Palms up to receive, down to ground. Allowing your feet to fall away from one another. Relax ankles, lower legs, knees, upper legs, hips. Legs top to bottom, bottom to top. Pelvis, abdominal muscles, chest, back, and spine. Torso, top to bottom, bottom to top, shoulders, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists, palms of your hands. Relax arms and hands, top to bottom, bottom to top, neck, jaw. Allow the tongue to fall from the roof of the mouth. Inner ear, outer ear, cheeks, eyes, eyebrows, face between the eyebrows, lines up, forehead, top of the head, back of the head, and skull, inside the head, brain. Downstairs brain, upstairs brain, right side brain, left side brain. Sensing the brain full, integrated. Surrender brain, mind eye, head, body. Relaxing the whole body into the neck into the moment with an audible sound. <sighs> Welcome to your chance.
that coming to consciousness is not a discovery of something new, but a long and painful return to that, which is always there. Allow your breath to deepen. Maybe wiggle fingers and toes, circles with wrists and ankles, arms overhead and legs straight. Getting that good morning stretch. Bringing the soles of the feet to the mat, keeping your right arm overhead, your left arm over chest, rolling onto the right side, pausing in the fetal position. Pressing your left hand into the earth, allow the head to roll up last as we come to a seated position, sitting tall, mudra hand gesture of choice, eyes closed, breath in, breath out. Inhaling the arms up, palms touch, gathering the energy of our practice today. Exhaling our hands to our heart center. Closing our practice by allowing my words to become your word. I am a vessel for divine light, seeking the best and ultimate healing. Bring your prayer hands to your mind body, the space between the eyebrows. Thank you for this divine healing light. Our hands back to heart center, reminding our heart of our intention, sealing it here with an own in here. Oh. Head to heart and gratitude. The divine light in me honors the divine light in you. Namaste. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me for our practice today. Love and light with you until next time.